Welcome back to Gin Reviews from South Florida. Tonight we are going back to the great state of Kentucky. And we're going to be reviewing Castle and Keys Rise. Again, this is Rise. I love this. I love everything about this package right here, this bottle. Just like uh, the Roots of Ruin, which was featured a couple of uh, weeks ago, this is uh, their next project, or actually maybe the one before. There was th these two that they had out. Uh, we're coming in at 47%. You gotta love that. And now you gotta love all the information you need is right here on the bottle. So that's what I'll be doing tonight, reading the bottle. Spring is when we celebrate new growth, and here at Castle and Key, it's a time to reflect on the rebirth and the very ground we stand on. On the old distillery that we restored and the blossoming fields around it, we now draw inspiration from. This seasonal gin is a testament to the land and to the vibrancy of the spring harvest, harnessing the spirit of rebirth in a thoughtful selection of botanicals, which include a juniper, of course, a coriander, galliaga root, earl grey tea, elderberry, ooh, lavender, wintergreen leaf, and chamomile. Not bad of a uh, profile there. 47%, you can't beat that, and of course, that is a strong bottle. Man, I love this distillery. I love everything they do. <laughs> I'm just thinking now, you know, I, I was in Tennessee uh, during spring when this was put out, this last spring, and uh, it was a hard spring for a lot of us. So I'm just happy to be able to open this right now. You know it. Wow. Um, so I'm getting juniper, but I'm also getting that winter mint, the, the spearmint. It's minty and cool. That also could be the chamomile on all the tea kind of swirling there, but I like that. It's very nice, bright, and yeah, I can see spring. Hmm. I could ask, I could definitely smell the base spirit underneath this, which is popping through. I mean, it is really nice and malty. Mm. There's a lot going on in this gin, just like in uh, Roots of Ruin. There is, there are things going on more so than I could even grasp. <laughs> Well, I definitely, I definitely am getting the wintergreen chamomile and juniper, like they're all together in this beautiful lineup of deliciousness. Let's, uh, ooh, look at the legging on that, huh? It's gonna be a little sweet. Let's knock this back and, uh, cheers, salute, everyone else in the world, drink up. There's this, oh, there's, mm. there's this beautiful, like, berry, phantom berryness. Wow. That burn, I just don't want to let go of the burn. It's so nice. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, this is really, this is kind of taking me for a loop here because. I was thinking it was going to be a little bit more towards the roots of ruin, but it's not. It has its own profile, the um, which is great. But I think the elderberry and the lavender together are making this like berry essence, like a strawberry springtime strawberry pie type of essence in the back. Um, 
then there's the juniper, of course, it's there. I mean, you're in a forest with everything else, but then the alcohol, like the actual percentage here, it just flows and hits you. And I love it. I mean, it hits you in a really good way. Sorry, 47%. Um, that's not too shabby. That's that's a, a traditional, I would say, a traditional beef eater. For, don't get me started on that. But I see a good gin usually is, starts at about 45 to 47. Those are the ones I, I tend to gravitate more towards. And yeah, yeah, Castle and Key, guys. Oh, I mean, seriously, you guys are amazing. I love these products you keep putting out. Don't ever stop. Please don't ever stop. We need more of, of you guys here in the States, especially. We are gonna do Rise. Rise gin and tonic tonight. Let's do uh, two ounces of Rise. Yes. Oh, baby. We are going to do six ounces. Bulk premium tonic water. We're going to do a few shots of Angostura orange. I got some grapefruit, ruby red of course. Some lemon here. And of course, what would a gin and tonic be without the lime? All right. And then just needs a little, just a little. All right. So, salute Castle and Key. Salute all my subscribers. Salute all my future subscribers. Wow. <laughs> the quinine in the fever tree is mixing ever so beautifully with the elderberry, juniper, the mint, and the coriander. I mean, it's just swirling around in a helix-like explosion of love, about to be. The citrus is pulling in all these botanicals that I just weren't tasting before, or I was, but only in little bits and pieces, like a jigsaw puzzle that didn't have every piece. I could kind of see it, but now I can fully see what the picture is. It's so beautiful. I mean, the elderberry, again, that elderberry, it brings so much fruity, berry quality without being a fruit or a berry in that way of thinking. Um, you know, bottom line though, you have to have a good gin to make a good cocktail. I mean, it's with anything. You make a pizza, you have to have a good crust to make a good pizza. You want to make a great sandwich, you gotta have good bread, right? It doesn't matter, you could spend all the money you want on, on your, uh, on your ham and, and uh, ribeye and everything else, but if that bread's not up to par, let's face it, it ain't gonna be good. And I stand 100% strong with that in saying I lost the gym. Well, it's it by my foot. <laughs> I stand 100% in saying that you, any, anything that you do, the foundation is usually what needs to have the most invested in. And to snag a bottle of this, it's an understatement. You, you want to have a great cocktail because I know already that this is going to be amazing in the, in the last word. You know, it's going to be amazing in a Corpse Reviver in a few hours from now. Um, a martini, duh. But for a gin and tonic to bloom the way that this gin blooms in it, Seriously, you have to go out. You have to go out and talk to your, to your purveyors of spirits, and you have to ask them. Especially if you are in a part of the world that is not here in the states, or a part of the country where you're not close to Kentucky. 
I'm not saying it's a hard, easy thing to do or other than that, but I think that if you talk up, have a good rapport, like anything else, I'm a chef, right? I have a great rapport with my fishmonger. I have an amazing rapport with my butcher, my dairy guy, my soda guy. I mean, ev everyone that I come in contact with, I put this face out there first and foremost. So they know that when something goes wrong, which does happen, or when something is in need, this face right here is the first thing that pops into their mind and they go, I want to help that guy out. He's a good guy. And that's how I get through everything I get through in life. And I'm just trying to imbibe that onto everyone else out there who maybe thinks, well, this guy on this channel, he's only doing like gins that are local to him, but it's not true at all. I mean, I could find, I can buy gins from anywhere in the world just by knowing that one or two or three people. I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to make it readily available to all of us. And that's my, my mission. My mission has been always to bring out uh, the best in gin, especially American gins. I want to showcase what our talents are in, in the world standing because I know, you know, we're not a hundred percent there, but we're getting there. And I think small contributions like this to this channel, to just subscribing to this channel, to liking the videos, to you know, maybe spreading it outside in your little social network of when you go out to have a drink at your bar or at your, you know, cocktail sh soiree that you throw every Friday night. I get it. Throw my name in there. People come in. Take a look at what you see. Because eventually, I want this face to represent gin. American gin. So, from me to you, to you to me, Everyone else here in the States from Sea to Shining Sea, I, I, I want to say thank you. First, thank you for sticking in to the end here. And second, I'd like to say, please, if you're not already a subscriber, subscribe. Like, hit the like button. Do all the things the kids say. I'll be here to make more reviews. And any of your questions, comments, or anything else, I'm always here to address them as suggestions. Anything along those lines, i love to help out. Just reach out. Ciao. Oh, you bastards. <laughs> Good night. Then I went to Sheila's, right? And she was telling me about these things that were going on in her life. And I was like, I know, I know. And then I said, whoa, I have to get back here to my darling, to my Angela, because she needs all the love in the world. So, Angie, how was your day? Did you have a good one? Miss Angela? Kitty? Are you okay? Oh, no. No. Oh, no. no. Don't do it, Kitty. Please. Oh, gosh. Please don't do it again, Kitty. No. No. <laughs> That's right. Fool, oh. you are now under my trance. My. You shall speak my language. First thing is get up. Good. Good. Second thing, go get me my food. Stupid asshole. Disregard the last thing. Just get me the food. Good, good, stupid imp. Yes, now bring it on over. You know what? In fact, I want you to put that on your head. I want to eat off your head. Well, well, maybe that, that, this isn't really working. Uh, maybe just put it there on the couch. Right there, in my face? Yeah, that works, I guess. I don't know. Why don't you just put it on the couch there? You're like a good idiot. Good moron. Good. Now you shall leave me. Idiot. Comes home drinking gin all the time. And tell me stupid stories about Sheila and whoever else I don't know. Oh, oh, what the hell, he's back. What do you want now? My hair? Why is the cat going here? What? 
Well, what are you telling me? Hey, it's all fun and games for a little oh, bit. Food, you but asshole. we crossed the line. Oh, come on, stop that. Exactly. What is this? Mind control thing only lasts for so long. I'll have to work is that why next time you switch Sheila. But for bed. now, I'll just eat all this delicious food. Are you telling everyone I'm drinking too much and then that's what's happening? Yum, yum, food, true food for me oh, is just for me. I better shrink. I gotta stop going for Dr. Meowenstein. You know, from Secaucus. Maybe Dr. Bacala.